Hi folks, I haven't actually made a wrap up so far this year <laughs> and to be fair the reason for that is because I haven't really read that much, at least not that much new stuff. I have got very much into podcasts recently and I've been listening to lots of those while I've been working as well as YouTube videos that are a bit like podcasts and I've been rereading quite a bit and have come to the realisation that I've only read about 12 books so far this year, which for me is not very many. But today I thought I would talk to you about the ones that I would recommend. There are certain books that I've read that aren't really relevant to this channel or I didn't enjoy enough to actually talk about. Um, so <laughs> these are the books that I've read this year and would recommend. So the first one, I have a list. The first one is Mythos by Stephen Fry and I did have some reservations about this one. I would definitely recommend listening to the audiobook. I saw on Chintzia's channel that she tried reading the physical book and just really didn't get along with it but got along better with the audiobook and that, that maybe what's great about that is that it's Stephen Fry reading it. Um, so <laughs> As to the quality of the book itself, there were certain moments where I felt like I was taken out of the story because there was some sort of language used that didn't seem to fit with the, the Greek myth theme. Uh, but yeah, I feel like it's a good overview of Greek myths. It starts with the Titans through to the Olympians and yeah, there were some stories in there that I wasn't familiar with. So that was great. However, I did feel like I was um, I was left wanting more, which is great in many ways, but uh, it just felt as though it could do could have done with being longer and more comprehensive. And I realised that it is quite a big book, but I did I did really enjoy it. And if you're into Greek myths, sort of as, on a casual basis and want to learn more, then this would be a great book for you. If you're very much into your Greek myths, then probably give this one a miss because it's not going to be anything you don't know. Uh, the other reservation I had with it is that it is a retelling but it didn't really feel as though, at least with the, with the myths that I knew, it didn't feel as though Stephen Fry was putting much of his own spin on it. He was a little bit with some of the language but uh, I don't know, I, I would have liked to have seen a bit more um, a bit more of um, an adaptation perhaps but maybe that's not what this book was meant to be. Anyway the next book I have I actually have a physical copy of. I listened to the audiobook which is wonderful. Definitely recommend the audiobook. It is The Mermaid and Mrs Hancock. I don't have a lot to say about this because a lot has already been said about it on YouTube um, but I did really enjoy it. Great historical fiction. It's about a man who procures a mermaid, a very rare specimen. The mermaid is not alive um, and he, he starts showing it around London and there is a woman who is a prostitute and she, it, her story starts separately but then starts to intertwine with his and how those two stories um, converge is really quite neat and what makes this book great I think because they're two quite interesting, um, not entirely likeable characters, but um, yeah, the dynamics between the two and with um, the situations that they're put into is really neat. And also beautiful, beautiful book. This is a, um, an advanced proof copy that I was sent by, um, well, it's Harvel Sacker, but they're part of Penguin Random House in the UK. So thank you for the proof copy. It's absolutely stunning and I mean, painted edges and the design itself is gorgeous. In fact, if you want to see me interview Suzanne Dean who designed this cover and see a little bit of behind the scenes, I will link a video in the cards and down below that um, goes over that and you can actually see some of the reference material that she used which is so fascinating. Next up we have The Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtue. This was a really fun read. I think after reading The Mermaid and Mrs Hancock I felt as though I still wanted to be in that historical fiction um, mindset and this was definitely that but 
totally, totally different. This one is a young adult novel and it's sort of, I found it a little bit jarring to begin with because it is historical fiction and I didn't feel as though the writing really fitted the time period. But then as I got into it, that didn't bother me so much. So I wonder if, um, if that was just me imagining things, it may have been. But <laughs> it's a real romp, it's, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> it's about a young man who is about to inherit or, or inherit more responsibilities on his father's estate. And you know, he's landed gentry back in the day. And so before he does this, he goes off on this grand tour of Europe with his friend Percy, who he is in love with. And the two of them get up to all sorts of shenanigans and there's this will they won't they sort of thing going on throughout the book. Uh, also he has an amazing sister who <laughs> is just awesome and she's got a whole book dedicated to her that's coming out later this year I believe. So that's very exciting. Um, I think it's called The Lady's Guide to Petticoats and Piracy or something very similar to that. So um, yeah, I really re would recommend this book. It's not one to be taken too seriously, but I think it's great to see these kinds of issues, um, LGBT issues, brought up in both historical fiction and um, in young adult fiction, because you see a bit of either and either um, of, of the two, but you don't often see them together. That said, I don't read a lot of YA, so maybe don't quote me on that. Okay, the next one was A Conjuring of Light by V.E. Schwab. This is the third in a trilogy. Not sure how much I've spoken about the other two. I read the first one ages ago and enjoyed it, but, or really enjoyed it in fact, but then the second one wasn't out and then I never got to reading the second one. And now all three are out and I can highly recommend them as just fun fantasy, um, another great female character in Lila Bard and, um, and Kel is a very serious protagonist. Um, but it's about, it, it's a little bit like Neverwhere in that there are different Londons. Um, I actually preferred this to Neverwhere as a, as a series. I think it, it goes into a lot more depth with the characters. I enjoy her writing. The third one, I did find that the beginning was a bit on the slow side really quiet on the slow side. Um, I was telling you about the different Londons wasn't I? Yeah so there are there are different Londons and like like different parallel worlds. Oh Lyra hello can you see her here? Oh you can't see her. Sorry she's being very cute and wants her lunch because we're trying feeding her <laughs> throughout the video so that she behaves. Yes good girl Lyra. Um, might see her at the end. So different Londons and Kel is an Antari, which means that he can go between the different Londons and there are certain requirements in order for him to do this. Um, but I like the concept, it's not entirely original, but what magical system is. Uh, yeah, I, I find these really fun. The third one did take me a bit longer because it wasn't available as an audiobook. Um, so that was slightly more drawn out which may have been why I found the first bit of it quite slow. However, yeah in general I would definitely recommend this series. Hello again the little bear. So having read again <laughs> The Mermaid and Mrs Hancock which I really enjoyed and The um, Gentleman's Guide I wanted to read more historical fiction and so I read a book or well, listened to the audiobook of a, a book that I have been meaning to read for Oh, probably since I started Book Chew. <laughs> it's a one that I knew that I was going to love, and I absolutely did. And it's The Crimson Petal and The White by Michelle Faber, whose other books I have really enjoyed. And yeah, this is very different from The Book of Strange New Things, but no less wonderful. It's an epic, or epic in proportions. It's quite a long book. It's about a prostitute called Sugar and about this man whose life she gets entangled with um, and you're not eating my wire are you Lyra? No. <laughs> and um, oi! <laughs> Over here. That's it. 
and she yeah I don't want to say much more if you haven't read it if you have read it you already know that really weird and wonderful things happen and um, it's very evocative of the time um, similar time to the mermaid in Mrs Hancock as well and it's just the way the whole thing is structured the the references to other classic novels like Jane Eyre um, just made me really enjoy it and this is contemporary fiction about historical times at its absolute best then I read a book called Disbanded Kingdom which I actually came across because there was a cover write-up on Spine magazine which is worth reading um, I cannot remember the name of either the author or the cover designer but I will insert them here this is about a young man a millennial living in a brexit age um, he is another gay character and I found this one was a little bit forgettable I liked the political stuff in there but I feel as though it could have gone into a bit more depth in general um, but it dealt with a lot of themes that I am interested in that sort of current political climate um, and LGBT themes so in that sense I would recommend it um, the audiobook was very well narrated and I enjoyed that aspect of it all right now we're gonna get to a really good one and there's pretty much no chance that you haven't already heard of this book but my goodness was it great I again I listened to the audiobook Lyra what are you doing you look can you see you yes there you are come on then <laughs> Cersei by Madeline Miller very anticipated read my goodness so I listened to this as an audiobook as well as tends to be the case um, because I listen to them as I'm illustrating things so Cersei I read The Song of Achilles quite a while ago um, as I was going over to London for the first time that well, war back in 2015 and I really enjoyed it and I've been waiting for this one for ages and it just lived up to all expectations and exceeded them it is about Circe who is a lesser known goddess from Greek mythology she's kind of best known for her most cameo um, in the Odyssey by Homer and this just goes into a lot more depth about her life has a bit of her backstory um, all the stuff that isn't in the Odyssey and it also has the section that's in the Odyssey um, which gives you a bit more um, context for the whole thing and I hadn't actually read all of the Odyssey before reading this but that's going to be next on my <laughs> list of things I talk about um, yeah I mean Madeline Miller's language is fantastic her characters well in particular Cersei because she is very much at the center of this novel um, being the main character for one thing but there are long periods in this book where it's just her and it's all from her perspective and she's observing the natural world around her um, as she lives on this island called Aea and I thought that there were a lot of parallels between her story and between I mean being a, a woman in the modern age but also between um, her magic and creativity which I found really interesting um, it's something that she sort of grows into as she matures and she's not able to fully explore her powers and what I would also call creativity until she breaks away from her family um, which happens pretty early on in the book um, so yes I think whether you're interested in Greek mythology or not this is a really interesting read um, really messing up the white balance of the, <laughs> of the camera here but yeah I cannot sing this book's praises enough and if you want to know more especially if you've read the book I would really recommend going and listening to Jean's podcast this is Jean of Bookish Thoughts her podcast which is called that's ancient history it's a recent release very very new thing and it's fantastic and in the second episode she interviews Madeline Miller about this book and her thoughts on mythology 
Uh, so yeah, I will link that down below as well. You're gonna get out of the way. Oh yes, so next I read, <laughs> you can, no, you're not gonna steal the food, Lyra. See, you are really here, I'm not talking to myself. You see her there? <laughs> not really. <laughs> the camera's too far away to tilt down. So, then I read The Odyssey by Homer. Finally. So I read the Iliad back at university when I did a classics paper, a classical literature paper, and I hated the Iliad. I thought it was just too many lists of ships and it, it's all about the, the battles and there wasn't enough about the characters, which is what I was really interested in. If you wanted a retelling of the Iliad that I think is more interesting than the Iliad itself. Sorry to all the classical scholars out there. Um, I'd really recommend The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller. Same author, absolute brilliant writing, um, just brings that to life in a way that at least the translation that I read didn't um, of, of the Iliad. So yeah, The Odyssey, um, I mean there's a bit too much sexism for my liking. I mean, to be fair, any sexism that isn't properly addressed in the story is going to be problematic. But I believe that there is a new translation of The Odyssey that is either just about to be released or has been released, um, which has been translated by a woman whose name I have forgotten. Not very good with names, I'm sorry. I'll put it up on the screen. Um, but that explores The Odyssey from a, a more feminist point of view. Which I'd be really interested to read. Um, I don't know if it'll be available on Audible. But um, yeah, so I listened to it and I think, I mean, that's how it's designed to be read. It, it was a part of an oral tradition of storytelling back in ancient times. And the audiobook version that I listened to is read by Sir Ian McKellen. So you can't really get much better than that. And if for some reason you don't want to listen to the Ian McKellen version, I don't know why you wouldn't. There is also a version read by Dan Stevens, who is also a wonderful audiobook narrator and has a lovely voice. The final book that I finished a couple of days ago is The Water Cure by so Sophie somebody, I want to say. Um, you'll be able to see it in the picture. Uh, I really liked this. It was quite unsettling as a read. Um, the best way I can describe the, the universe that it's set in is that it feels a bit like how it's described in The Handmaid's Tale where the outside world is sort of full of radiation poisoning and um, nasty things and that's how it's sort of described in this that the outside world is tainted and it's about a group of women who are living on this island so they're away from all the toxicity of the outside world but they're very paranoid about things infecting them that come in from the outside um, including people <laughs> which is what happens and it's sort of the, the turning point of uh, at the beginning of the novel is that some men arrive on the island. Um, so th the women are three sisters and their mother. And they do all sorts of weird and um, quite disturbing things in order to cleanse themselves. And um, this sort of ritual, um, what series of rituals that they go through, a lot of which are to do with enduring pain and to do with isolation that's kind of how this novel feels. It feels very isolated because of the, uh, don't eat that Lyra, <laughs> because of the setting and it's also because there are so few characters in it. Um, I don't want to say too much more than that but the rituals often are to do with water as well. They are living on an island so that's part of it and obviously the title being The Water Cure um, that's something that makes more sense as the book progresses. Um, so yeah, very sort of cult-like existence that these women women live in. And it's told from a couple of different points of view, which gives you an interesting insight into, into this world from, from the, the sisters' different perspectives. Lyra, what are you doing? Are you just being cute? 
so yeah this was excellent contemporary fiction I really I don't know if enjoyed is the word but it was certainly it was entertaining but quite disturbing Lyra please don't eat that and um, yeah I would recommend it very much so um, I have been struggling to find contemporary books recently that um, I'm really interested in reading. So if you have any recommendations for books that have been published in the past, say, six months, um, especially if they're available as an audiobook, uh, because I don't have much time for ordinary reading at the moment. Um, Lyra, do you, can you not eat everything, please? Um, yeah. That would be very much appreciated so any recommendations leave them down in the comments and if you want to comment on any of the books that i've read or um, are interested in read them, reading them then leave those down in the comments too as always thank you very much for watching i'm sorry that lyra has been such a pest throughout this she's now trying to eat my hand stop it stop it stop it no um you're gonna fall off now you are <laughs> Oh dear. All right. I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Here's the culprit. Oh, you were being so cute just then. What happened? Hey. Ah. So cute. That's it. Good girl. <laughs>